you're welcome hope you guys are feeling good so the hidden teachings of jesus not what you think wow Ooh. so let's watch so what i have here might be the single biggest discovery in the last 200 years and that is not an overstatement i'm holding the lost gospel of thomas this is a collection of sayings of what jesus said you might be thinking well clark i know what jesus said i've read the new testament i was raised christian like it's all public info what's crazy a little history lesson before we get into it and then i'll say two things and give you some of this text this backs up a lot about what we talk about with the law of attraction with manifestation with self-actualization with listening to your inner nature and being true to that, that that is the real meaning of what it means to be alive. In 1945 in Egypt, people were going in and they were doing some archaeology and they opened this tomb. And in there was a clay jar with 13 leather scrolls. These are also known as the Dead Sea Scrolls, which would go on to find. This discovery was massive. These were original writings of sacred texts that in 325 AD, Bishop Constantine and the Nicene Council, they actually had a meeting and decided what stays and what goes in the New Testament, which went on to be Christian theology. What they left out was the Gospel of Thomas, was other gospels like Mary Magdalene, or they edited down so many books and took out pieces that they didn't like. Now there's one one theory that they did that because they wanted to make it more mainstream and so everybody could understand it. But the other theory is that there's some powerful teachings in here that didn't essentially fit with the narrative they wanted to go with. So they removed them all together. And look, before I go any further, I know right now there's probably some people chomping at the bit, typing a comment like, what are you doing talking about Christianity? What are you doing talking about that on this channel? I want to say two things because I think it's important to give my personal biases. The first is I'm no way, shape or form trying to make this channel the least bit about religion. Religion, okay, but I think you can look at sacred texts and see what they mean and what you can learn from them You can believe whatever you want. Look, I don't care what religion you believe in That's not the point of this video And if you're really content in what you believe or you're not open-minded you might want to click off this video It's okay not to watch it. The second is that I was raised in a Christian household Okay, every Sunday morning at like 7 a.m. Hey Clark time to go to Sunday school And I was like, oh my god Like if there's one way to make kids not want to be religious It's getting them up at 7 a.m. On a Sunday when they'd rather be watching Nickelodeon and I didn't go to private school I went to a public school, but when I it was time to go to college My dad worked at a Christian private school So I got a sweet deal on tuition and so I went and at that school you had to get a minor in Christian theology So that's what I have so I'm saying that not to brag and be like I know everything there is to know I have backing and formal training in Christian theology I'm very aware of the Bible and Jesus and I started researching these uh, Gnostic Gospels and I'd actually bring this up I'd, to my professors and my theology professors and I'd ask them about this stuff and it was so fascinating because they'd always keep it kind of hush hush they'd be like yeah well those didn't fit so they're not important and they would never answer the question of like is this stuff still valid? Is this still the work of God? I thought it was so interesting that this stuff kind of just got like laughed at and looked over because if all the writings are true and equally valid, but they left out some, shouldn't you at least look at all the evidence or all the stuff that Jesus said? My theory is that a lot of people are afraid to look at this stuff because it's very powerful and it's very different than the narratives you hear in the other gospels. There was a group of people, it's worth mentioning, that did follow this stuff and the other texts and the unedited stuff, but they were burned at the stake for it and they were called Gnostic. It was that controversial. I want to read you some of these passages. This is a very short little PDF. Uh, you can get various translations. I found this one that was pretty good. It's only 12 pages and 114 verses. Okay, so it's very short compared to some other books in the Bible. And what I'm actually going to do is light that bush on fire because it's like the burning bush. I came out here to the most uh, Egypt looking place in my backyard, which is Arizona. The sun's setting. It's still 100 degrees, so I'm sweating for you. Smash that like button if you're Excited to learn some of these mind-blowing hidden teachings of the Bible that Jesus said. If this ain't a way to kick off a text, I don't know what is. These are the secret sayings which the living Jesus spoke and which Didymus Judas Thomas wrote down. First verse, and he said, whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. Jesus said, let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished and rule over all. This is where it gets cool. Verse three, Jesus said, if those who lead you say, see the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say, see it is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you and it is outside of you. When you come to know yourself, then you will become known 
and you realize that it is you who are the sons of the living Father. But if you will not know yourselves, you dwell in poverty, and it is you who are in poverty. What I take away from verse 3 and why I love that and to kick this off is that it says the kingdom is within you. And that I think that's so true now that everything you want is within you. And so many times we're raised to go to teachers for answers, but you were born rich already. You were born with a lot of answers and internal knowledge within. And it's not about learning, it's almost about forgetting. That's what Socrates says. He says that sometimes learning is really remembering. And that it's not in the he's not in the business of putting new ideas in, new teachings in, as much as he is pulling bad ones out that are no longer serving you. So if you're really honest right now, a lot of people People go to friends with what should I do in this relationship should I stay should I go but like you're just looking for confirmation on your internal gut feeling that's why we call it a gut feeling that's very powerful right you can do this through meditation you can do this through journaling you can do this through talking out loud to yourself when you're driving in the car like a lot of things are available to you to tap into this inner nature that you have within you moving on his disciples questioned him and said to him do you want us to fast how shall we pray shall we give alms what diet shall we observe Jesus said do not tell lies and do not do what you hate for all things are playing in the sights of heaven for nothing hidden will become manifest and nothing covered will remain without being uncovered I love that point of nothing hidden will remain hidden and nothing covered will remain uncovered right because at the end of the day you can't lie to yourself this is my interpretation of it again I'm not saying it's right it's just how I take it that that inner nature that inner truth that higher self that you have within if you're really honest like you know when something something's not serving you and it's not so much finding the answer it's listening to it and taking action like you ever worked a job you just hated you weren't fulfilled but you kept doing it out of habit and routine but every day you'd go in and kind of eat away at you a little bit I've had some of those you know that you don't like that job you know that you're meant for bigger things in other words you're not listening to it okay but you can't you can only do that for so long before we snap same thing if you're in a relationship with someone you know you're not supposed to be with but it's just comfortable you know every day that things are pretty good with them but you're kind of settling and it says you can only do that for so long before it becomes uncovered and people snap That's why you see people go through midlife crises and instead of getting divorced they buy a sports car but you can only uphold the sports car for so long before you're like i didn't even want this thing it just made me feel good in the moment kind of here's another one the disciples said to Jesus, tell us how our end will be. Jesus said, have you discovered then the beginning that you look for the end? For where the beginning is, there will be the end. Blessed is he who will take his place in the beginning. He will know the end and will not experience death. Interpretation, the present moment, that right here, the past, the future, those are an illusion, those are a blur. And that people who live for the past, that's what Joe Dispenza calls depression. Ah, oh, the good old days are behind us. Ah, oh, I remember that time in college, it'll never be as good again. Or I remember that relationship, I remember that. If you live in the past, you're not experiencing now, which is what you want, that's the name of the game. It's the same thing in the future, that's what they call anxiety. Worrying about stuff that hasn't happened yet. Tomorrow's worries will take care of themselves. That, I believe, comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Worry about today, it's enough on its own. And if you're worried about the future, which has hasn't happened, you're sacrificing the thing that does happen, which is now. We can't control what's happened or what's going to happen. All you can control is right here, right now. And if you're looking for the end, you're missing the beginning or you're missing the now. That's, in my opinion, what this is saying. And that's why it's so powerful. The present moment is what you really want. My favorite one is save the best for last. It says this, his disciples said to him, when will the kingdom come? Jesus said, it will not come by waiting for it. It will not be a matter of saying, here it is, or there it is. Rather, the kingdom of the Father is spread out upon the earth, and men do not see it. <sighs> Crazy that Jesus said that. Again, reconfirming the present moment right here, right now. So stop waiting for tomorrow to be happy. Stop waiting for the new opportunity to be happy, to be fulfilled, to start doing the thing you do. I was talking to a buddy once and he said, you know, I'm dating this girl, but I'm, you know, like when I get married one day, I'll start doing all these things for her. I'll start buying the flowers. I'll start uh, treating her right. I'll start making a real effort to have like the best relationship ever because we'll be married and then you have to make it work. And that's just one example, like in relationships, I think a lot of people wait for that day where they can start being their ideal self, but it's right here, right now. Like a lot of people say, okay, when I move, then I'll finally start doing blank. Or when this thing happens, then I'll start, then I'll leave that job that's unfulfilling. When I have enough money, then I'll start the business. But just know that every minute you wait is a minute wasted. We gotta stop living for tomorrow, sacrificing today. So I'm curious, 
curious, what do you think of the Gospel of Thomas? Again, it's like a 12 page read. You can download it and read it on your own, but I thought I would just share some of my favorites with you. Do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Do you have something you want to add? What are your opinions? Post them in the comments below. All right, so the eating teachings. What is trying to say that most of these things you read are not specifically found in the Bible. So it's found, let's say, in the Hebrew Bible. So it's trying to let us understand that the hidden teaching of Jesus, the one that we not, we not get had the opportunity to see in the Bible, is a very powerful one. And, you know, it relates to human life, human behaviors. So that was all he was just particular about. And, ah, man, well, that was a beautiful one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.